July 20, 1969, humanity took its first steps on the moon. But what they did not tell you is what it cost us. The real story is not just about triumph. It is about the sacrifices, the dangers, and the secrets buried beneath the lunar dust. What price did we really pay to make history? Stay with me, because what you are about to discover might just change how you see the moon forever. The moon has been more than just a glowing rock in the night sky. For thousands of years, it has fascinated humanity, inspiring myths, legends, and even shaping the way we live. Ancient civilizations looked up at the moon and saw gods, spirits, and omens. The Greeks believed it was the home of Selene, the goddess of the moon, while the Chinese spoke of Chang'e, a woman who drank an elixir of immortality and floated up to the lunar surface. Every culture, from the Egyptians to the Mayans, wove. Stories around the moon's mysterious presence. But its influence is not just in stories. The moon controls the tides, pulling the oceans with its gravitational force. Farmers once planned their harvests according to the lunar cycle, believing that crops grew better when planted under a waxing moon. Some even say the moon affects Tidridi, human behavior, linking full moons to restless nights, wild animals, and strange occurrences. Whether through myth, science, or daily life, the moon has been quietly shaping our world long before we ever dreamed of touching it. But how did we go from simply gazing up in wonder to actually walking on its surface? Stay with me, because the journey to the moon is one of the most incredible stories in human history. What if the moon landing was not about discovery, but survival? The race to space was not just about exploration. It was a battle for dominance, a high-stakes war fought beyond Earth's atmosphere. In the tense years of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a fierce competition, each determined to prove its superiority. Victory in space meant more than just scientific achievement. It was a symbol of power, a message to the world about who controlled the future. The Soviets struck first. In 1957, they shocked the world by launching Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite to orbit Earth. Just one month later, Sputnik 2 carried a living passenger, a dog named Laika, into space. The message was clear. The Soviet Union was winning. Then, in 1961, they delivered the ultimate blow. Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey into space, orbiting Earth in Vostok 1 and returning a hero. The United States could not afford to fall behind. If the Soviets controlled space, they could control the skies and possibly the future of warfare. Determined to catch up, the U.S. launched the Apollo program, setting an ambitious goal, landing a man on the moon. Billions of dollars, countless hours, and the brightest minds in science and engineering were poured into making it happen. Every launch, every failure, and every breakthrough brought them one step closer. But could they do it before the Soviets? The world held its breath as the greatest technological race in history reached its final stretch. The moment of truth was near. Would you strap yourself to a rocket, knowing there was a real chance you would not come back? That was the terrifying reality faced by the three men of Apollo 11. They were not just astronauts. They were pioneers stepping into the unknown, risking everything for a dream so bold that many thought it was impossible. But this mission was not just about them. It was about proving that humanity could achieve the unthinkable. It was about answering the challenge set by President John F. Kennedy when he declared, We choose to go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. The risks were overwhelming. The technology needed to land on the moon did not even exist when Kennedy made his famous speech in 1962. NASA engineers had to build everything from scratch. New rockets, 
new spacecraft, and new computers, all more advanced than anything the Ebi Drew world had ever seen. There were countless ways the mission could fail. A miscalculation could send them floating into space forever. A landing mistake could mean crashing onto the moon's surface. Even if they landed safely, would they be able to lift off again? No one knew for sure. Despite the danger, three men were chosen to make history. Neil Armstrong, a test pilot known for his calm under pressure. Buzz Aldrin, a brilliant engineer and the second man to walk on the moon. And Michael Collins, the e pilot who would orbit the moon alone while his crewmates took humanity's first steps on another world. As they sat atop the massive Saturn V rocket, 36 stories high and filled with millions of pounds of explosive fuel, the world watched in Pointe-Hind awe. Would they succeed? Or would this mission become a tragic chapter in history? The countdown had begun. Imagine standing on another world, looking back at Earth. A tiny blue dot in an infinite black void. That was the view Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had as they prepared to make history. But before that moment, the world held its breath. It was July 20th, 1969. Millions of people were glued to their televisions, listening to the crackling radio transmissions from nearly 240,000 miles away. The lunar module, Eagle, was descending. Every second felt like an eternity. Then, after a heart-stopping silence, the words came through, The Eagle has landed. Relief washed over NASA's control room, but the mission was far from over. A few hours later, the world watched as Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon's surface. His voice, calm but filled with the weight of the moment, echoed through history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Buzz Aldrin followed, describing the moon as a magnificent desolation. The surface was covered in fine gray dust untouched for billions of years. With each step, their boots left the first human footprints on another world. But beneath the awe, there was fear. If something went wrong, there was no rescue. The lunar modules, engines had to ignite perfectly, or they would be stranded forever. Every movement had to be precise, every moment calculated. And yet, in the middle of all that pressure, they took a moment to look up. Above them, Earth floated in the blackness of space, a fragile, beautiful world, home to everyone they had ever known. For a brief moment, the entire planet was united, watching together as two humans walked where no one had ever walked before. And soon, it would be time to leave, to return home and prove that the impossible had been done. What if the Apollo 11 mission had ended in tragedy? It almost did, several times. The risks were staggering. A single mechanical failure could have left Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stranded on the moon with no hope of rescue. A poorly timed engine ignition could have sent them crashing back to Earth or lost in space forever. Even returning safely was not guaranteed. Every moment of the mission was a gamble with death. And in the middle of it all, one man watched from above, completely alone. Michael Collins, the astronaut, history nearly forgot, stayed in orbit around the moon while his crewmates made history below. For nearly 24 hours, he circled in absolute solitude, the most isolated human being in existence. On the far side of the moon, he lost all contact with Earth. No radio, no voices, nothing. If something went wrong, he could do nothing but wait. If Armstrong and Aldrin failed to return, he would have had to make the lonely journey home, carrying the weight of their loss forever. But against all odds, they made it back. The Apollo 11 crew returned as heroes, 
but not everyone believed they had really been to the moon. Almost immediately, conspiracy theories spread. Claims that the landing was staged, that the footage was filmed on a Hollywood set, that the American flag should not have been waving in a place with no air. Decades later, despite overwhelming evidence, some still question whether we ever went at all. But those who were there, who risked their lives and touched the moon's surface, knew the truth. They had ventured into the unknown and survived. And their journey was only the beginning. The moon was once a dream. Now it might be our second home. But after Apollo 11, after all the risks, triumphs, and sacrifices, why did humanity turn away from the moon for over 50 years? The truth is, after six successful Apollo missions, public interest faded. The space race had been won, budgets were slashed, and NASA focused on other projects. For decades, the moon remained untouched, a silent reminder of what once seemed impossible. But that is about to change. NASA's Artemis program is bringing humanity back to the moon, this time to stay. With plans to establish a permanent lunar base, Artemis will send astronauts farther than ever before, testing the technology needed for the next great leap, Mars. And this time, it is not just governments racing for the moon. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are transforming space travel, building rockets that could one day make the moon a destination for civilians, not just astronauts. Imagine a future where people live and work on the moon, where lunar colonies mine resources, and where the moon becomes the gateway to the rest of the solar system. Science fiction is turning into reality, and the next giant leap is closer than we think. The question is no longer if we will return, but when we will go beyond. And this time, when we touch the moon, we may never leave. We touch the moon once. But what happens when we go back? For decades, the moon has been a symbol of human achievement, but some believe it holds secrets we were never meant to uncover. Strange lights seen by astronauts, mysterious radio signals, and theories of hidden structures on the moon have fueled speculation that we were not alone up there. Some even claim that the Apollo missions saw something NASA never revealed something that made us stay away for over 50 years. Could there be more to the moon than we have been told? Conspiracy theories suggest the existence of alien bases on the far side, where strange lights and unexplained signals have been reported. Some believe there were secret Apollo missions that never made it into the history books. Even Apollo 11, astronauts, including Buzz Aldrin, spoke of seeing unusual flashes of light while on the moon. Were they just space debris and cosmic radiation? Or was there something more? Regardless of the mysteries, one thing is certain. Humanity is ready for its next giant leap. As we prepare to return to the moon, our ambitions stretch beyond it. Mars is the next great destination a world waiting to be explored. But before we step onto the red planet, we must first conquer the moon once more. And this time, we will be there to stay. The question remains, what will we find when we go back?